Alright, here we go guys. DYS F4 Fly Control Review. Some of you are really going to like it, some of you are really going to hate it. But either way, I recommend sticking around because I'm going to give you a general overview of the Fly Control and then I'm going to go into the things that you have to know if you want everything to work right. I've spent hours tracing pins and pads to the processor to figure out exactly what is going on and why some things were not working, but I've got it all figured out. And then after that, I'll give you my general thoughts, what I like and dislike about it. So first up, I purchased this from Amazon.com for $40. I've also seen it on Banggood for $38.50, I believe. I'll leave you links to both of them in the description below, as well as any other websites where I can find this thing. When you purchase it, it comes in a box like this. And what you get is the flight controller, a XC60 connector with pigtail. It is much longer than this. I've just gone ahead and shortened mine. It also does not come installed. I've gone ahead and soldered it on. You also get a buzzer with plastic standoffs and hardware to mount it and eight silicone grommets. These grommets go in each of the four corners to soft mount your flight controller, much like with the uh, Race Flight Revolt flight controllers. It seems like someone finally caught on to what they were doing. And I gotta say, out of all the different ways I've soft mounted flight controllers, this is the most effective, at least out of all of the testing that I've done. So like I said, you mount one in each of the four corners, you get four spares after that, and should you need more spares than four, the Race Flight Revolt grommets are the same exact size and dimensions, so if you do need any more, now you know where to get them. Though I will say that these black ones are actually softer than the Race Flight grommets, and I thought the Race Flight grommets were pretty soft. You may notice that it looks really slick and wet. Um, they actually spray this with whatever you guys are using to not waterproof your components but make it water resistant uh, yeah it comes with that and that's the first I've first time I've ever seen anyone do that this is a flight controller and PDB in one much like with the Betaflight F3 flight controller that I just did a review on also just like the Betaflight F3 a lot of guys have noticed that soldering to the negative pads and pins is pretty difficult and the reason is the the pads are actually thicker because of the built-in PDB. It's just nature of the beast. So what I've been doing is just cranking up the temperature on my soldering iron and uh, that solves that problem. It has a built-in current sensor and I like this much much more than the pro version of the Omnibus fly controllers uh, because those boards it's not a PDB built into it. You have to run your battery leads to the flight controller first and then the same gauge wire from the flight controller to the PDB and it is just a mess and a headache. This is much better. It's rated from 2 to 6S just like uh, the Betaflight F3 where with the Omnibus it's rated up to 4S but some guys have been using 5S and the voltage regulator is rated for 3 amps at 5 volts. Not only that but this style of regulator is different from the standard versions of Omnibus, not the pro versions, just the standard. Uh, which are notorious for overheating and f they get so hot that they fry themselves. Especially if you wire in a camera and video transmitter into those boards, then you further increase your risk of frying that regulator. Uh, where with this style, and it's the same style that the Betaflight F3 uses and the pro versions of Omnibus, uh, this style runs much cooler and you can actually power your camera and video transmitter off the board uh, with no ill consequences. It has the chipset for the built-in on-screen display that is compatible with Betaflight's OSD feature. Uh, like I said a hundred times before, it is amazing. I like it so much that I can't see myself going back to a flight controller that does not have this feature. Uh, I love being able to change my PIDs, rates, expos, and much more through the on-screen display using the sticks on my transmitter. And uh, not only that, but uh, now we have video transmitters with smart audio, you can change your uh, bands, frequencies, and power output through the on-screen display. Uh, so all of this in combination, I mean, it, it, it's small, it saves weight, saves space, and it keeps me from having to take a laptop into the field with me when I just want to make these simple little changes. Going back to the voltage, uh, most flight controllers when you plug in a USB cable, uh, it will power some of the 5 volt pins and on some flight controllers it will power all of the 5 volt pins. On this board it does not power any of the 5 volt pins. If you do want 5 volts coming out of your pins you do have to plug in a LiPo battery. So uh, this can be somewhat annoying if you are trying to calibrate your channel endpoints or create any modes and switches. Uh, you, I'm just letting you know you do have to plug in a LiPo. 
It also does not have a SD card reader. And a lot of you guys that love black box logging, uh, this is probably going to turn you off of this flight controller. But I will say that it does have 8 megabytes of internal flash storage. You're probably wondering what these pins are for. Uh, DYS actually makes it 4 in 1 ESC that this flight controller can just plug right into. Uh, the only problem I see with that ESC though is it's only rated for 20 amps. And they may have a 30 amp ESC. I, I just could not find it. I searched everywhere. Um, but for now, I'm just running three individual 30 amp ESCs. As far as wiring, your main battery lead will go to these two pads, your ESC main power and ground wires will go to the pads on the outside, and then the small signal wire will go to this uh, circle pad here, and then same thing for the small ground wire going to this circle pad here. If you are concerned about ripping these pads off, not to worry. Um, I'll flash a picture on your screen of when I was going through the entire board tracing the pins and pads to the processor. Uh, worst case scenario, you can remove this connector and have four additional pads for your motors. This flight controller does not have a barometer or magnetometer. Uh, and I forgot to mention that with the Betaflight F3 flight controller when I did that review. And then I know a lot of you guys asked me about it. So the answer is no, neither one of these have those two sensors. And my guess and explanation of why they probably don't have these sensors are because uh, these two boards are geared more towards racing and freestyle flying. Uh, they probably assumed not many people uh, care for a barometer or magnetometer. Now let's move on to the things that you need to know. Um, first off, do not use Betaflight 3.1.7, which at the time we're recording this video is the newest version of firmware, if you want to use SBUS because uh, with F3 processor flight controllers, they have inverters on all three UARTs, but on at least on all the F4 boards that I've tried so far, they only have one hardware inverter, which is located right here. For this reason, if you want to use SBUS, you have to put your signal wire on a very specific pin, which is tied into this inverter. I'm going to flash a picture on your screen of DOIS's uh, pinout for this board. You'll see right here, this pin is labeled SBUS, which is the same thing as UART number one, receive. And this is the pin that is tied into that inverter. But like I said, it does not work for 3.1.7 because the processor is not telling it to basically turn on. And uh, like you FreeSky guys, FreeSky receivers, the signal is actually inverted. So you're having to uninvert it or invert it twice, same thing but it does work with 3.1.6, I can confirm that. Also, if you look to the left of that pin, you'll see UART number three, receive, and the pin above that is UART three, transmit. These pins are actually flip-flopped and backwards. You can fix this through the CLI. Uh, if I think about it, I will uh, type out what you need and leave that for you in the description. That way you can just copy and paste it into your CLI and that will flip-flop them back to where they should be. Uh, but if I forget, somebody remind me. On the left side of the board, you will see UART 6 receive. The pin to the right has some kind of strange writing. Uh, that, I can confirm, is UART number 6 transmit. If you're using a Spectrum satellite receiver, uh, there is not a pin dedicated for 3.3 volts, though there is 3.3 volts somewhere on this board. It's they have a 3.3 volt regulator on every single flight controller because that is actually what's powering the processor. So you may have to break out your uh, voltmeter and probe around a little bit until you find 3.3 volts. If you're using a PPM receiver, I don't know if DOIS advertises this board as being able to use PPM or not. I haven't looked, but there is not a dedicated pad for PPM, though you can still use PPM. Uh, once again, I'll flash a picture on your screen of the pinouts for this uh, set of pads right here. On the left side, in the middle, is going to be the pad for PPM. And I can confirm it works with the uh, Turnigy or FlySky receivers as well as the uh, FreeSky receivers. If you're like me and using the Turnigy Evolution or any other Turnigy uh, transmitter, I can also confirm that. Uh, SBUS, uh, I couldn't get SBUS to work. It may work on that inverted pin. I didn't try it. Uh, it doesn't matter because IBUS does work on all three of the UARTs. 
and IBUS is better than SBUS, so I don't know why you would use SBUS in the first place. So just pick out a receive on any of the UARTs and switch it to IBUS and you'll be just fine. And that does it for that. So what are my overall thoughts, what I like and dislike? This is just my personal opinion and everyone's different. Everyone has different wants and needs and different setups, but uh, just me. Uh, the Omnibus has been my favorite flight controller going on six months now, but I think I just found my new favorite. Uh, the reason I say this, once again, this is, this is just me. Um, I know this board has a lot of negatives to it, uh, but the way I see it, yeah, the not having 5 volts of power with just a USB plugged in, that one is annoying. I will give it that. Uh, that one actually does bug me a little bit. Not having uh, inverted signals on all three UARTs and only having one, that doesn't bother me because I use iBus with the TurnG Evolution. I can use any UART I want. Don't care about barometers or magnetometers when I'm freestyle flying and racing. Uh, that's just, I, I, don't, I just couldn't care less. I know some guys do care because they are trying to obey uh, like the legal limits of how high they can fly. And, uh, you know, I'm, there's nothing wrong with that. I don't care about the SD card reader and uh, only having 8 megabytes of in internal flash storage because uh, when I tune my PIDs, I do it by feel and by eye. The only time I black box log is when I'm trying to tune my filters, and 8 megabytes is more than enough. Don't care about the UART number 3 receive and transmit pins being flip-flopped. That's easy to fix in the CLI. That's pretty much it. Uh, as far as the things that I do like, I love how small of a package this is. Having the PDB and flight controller in one, that is a great idea. And uh, the same thing goes for the Betaflight F3. Great board. Then on top of that, having the on-screen display built in saves even more space and even more weight. Combined with all of that, it's rated for up to 6S. I see a lot of guys using either one of these boards for racing. Not to mention we don't have to worry about the voltage regulator overheating and frying itself uh, like with the standard versions of Omnibus flight controllers. I like the race light revolt style grommets and soft mounting. Uh, like I said, out of my testing, that is the best way to remove vibrations from your gyro. Not only that, but this gyro isn't even as sensitive as the race light revolt. So uh, the two put together, uh, you're practically going to have no vibrations. The water resistant coating that they put on it from the factory, I'm surprised I have not seen this sooner. Um, I mean, I, I've never got a board wet, but hey, I think it's a great idea. I'm sure a lot of guys will appreciate it. And the whole ESC idea, being able to snap this flight controller down on a 4 one ESC, great idea. I just wish they would have a uh, 30 amp 4 one ESC, because if they do, I'm jumping all over that. But that does it, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.